selected two verses, two sets of scriptures, as I should say, this morning. One from the Book of Mormon, Mosiah, King Benjamin's Proclamation, and from uh, Acts. And these are the words which he spake and caused to be written. My brethren, all ye that have assembled yourselves together, you that can hear my words which I shall speak unto you this day, for I have not commanded you to come up hither to trifle with words which I shall speak, but that you should hearken unto me and open your ears that you may hear, your hearts that you may understand, and your minds that the mysteries of God may be unfolded to your view. And from Acts chapter 2, And Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Down in verses 46 and 47, it says, And they, the people, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Good morning. morning. Wow, memories. Aren't they powerful? I hope uh, many of you have the same memories that... uh, I've been flooded with this morning. And memories are that much more powerful when they're accompanied by the Holy Spirit. Once a tenor. Always a tenor. Some of you might not know my first steps into this church, into the gospel, were made just down the road in that basement with my good brother and my father-in-law singing, my dear sister playing and my wife playing. So it's a good morning, and it's a good morning in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want each of you to know that as I looked at the many faces, each of you have filled a part in my life, and I'm not sure I knew it till just this moment, how deep how deep those roots go. As I was recalling specific times spent at young adult classes, spent in homes playing games, singing in the choir. Have we prepared ourselves this morning to meet God? Have we come this morning in a prayerful manner. I want each of you to know that I prayed this week for this congregation and for you guys. I prayed that we would bond together as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I prayed that we would be able to break that bread of life, as our brother said, but it, it takes more than just coming because that's something we do on Sunday. Have we made the proper preparation? Have we come to church to study and to serve, to feed, and to be fed, and to love, but also to be loved, to allow ourselves to be loved. Did we come in that spirit that allows our brothers and sisters to look upon our faces, our countenance, our raiments, and see that glorious, glorious spirit of Jesus Christ? lived out and living in our lives today. It reminds me, uh, 
last two years ago, my wife and I, we just moved back from Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, we are so thankful to be back. And one of the opportunities there is there's a lot of really, really good music, and there's a lot of really, really great uh, contemporary Christian music and, and different varieties of it. And one of the things that we did each year, uh, there is a, an artist named Andrew Peterson, and he puts on, he has written, I shouldn't say he puts on, he has written, Behold the Lamb of God. I hope if some of you uh, are, are familiar with it, if not, I would encourage you highly to go find Andrew Peterson's Behold the Lamb of God. It will just bring the, the birth of Christ to you in a whole different uh, vein. The songs are wonderful, the musicians are extremely talented, and the Spirit of God is alive in that. And what I, why I told you that is two years ago, he, he has guest artists that come and sing the different parts, the voices of Mary and Joseph and, and all the different things. And there was a young lady uh, that came two years ago, and her name's Ellie Holcomb. And before they do the Behold the Lamb of God part of the concert, the different artists that are invited, they give them an hour and they each do their own songs. And it's just wonderful, but... I got to tell you, this young lady stood up, and she started playing, and I looked at Tammy, and Tammy looked at me, and she sang a song called Marvelous Light. And as she sang it, the Spirit of God just exuded out of her body. And we looked at each other, and we knew at that moment that the Holy Spirit, that ministering of the Holy Spirit, that revelation that this church is built on, brothers and sisters, that rock of revelation, is as strong today if we're prepared. So have we prepared this morning to come and be fed and to love and be loved and to serve as our Father in heaven would have us? We spend a lot of time on... Uh, On what I call, and this is just, you know, what I call, call it, but we spend a lot of time on man's church. We kind of take ownership, which in some things isn't a bad thing in some ways. We want to be here. We want to be here when the doors open. We want to be a part of what goes on, the activities. But is that all there is to this gospel? Is that all there is to this gospel? Or do we get, we kind of talked about it in Sunday school a little bit. I think our brother uh, talked about uh, sometimes it's easier. Okay, well, I, I'll do this or I'll take care of that or I'll clean the church or I'll do this or I'll, I'll go do, you know, something that's a little easier that fits maybe more into our individual gifts or talents. Or maybe our, our skill set. I, maybe it's not even gifts and talents, but something that it's easy for each of us to do. We all know those things that you can just, at the drop of a hat, if somebody asks you to do it, so, oh, I can do that. I can do that. I, I'll do that. Are we really tending to God's church? What about what goes on outside these walls? Are we so busy focused on what happens inside the church? with our different guidelines, with our classes, with who's up front, or how the prayers are set. All congregations, we all have those things that we have to do. God's not chaotic. We know that there has to be order to his church. But what I'm getting at, are we really listening to what the Lord wants us to do? Are we feeding God's sheep? Are we feeding our brothers and sisters? And we're all familiar with uh, Peter in the, the New Testament. And now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. And when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Feed my lambs. 
He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter said, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said, feed my sheep. And the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Now Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Are we feeding God's sheep? Are we minding to the church the way that each of us should be mindful of this church? Are we prepared? I read one of the scriptures uh, at the beginning uh, from King Benjamin's proclamation. I find it very interesting because at that time when he stood up, he was on a big tower and they had thousands of people. And you guys know the story as they gathered. Everybody couldn't hear. Everybody couldn't hear, so he made it to be written. He made it to be written. There's a reason that things are written down. We make lists and we write things down so we don't forget them, so we can remember them. Things are recorded and kept in archives. Things are recorded and kept in volumes. Things are recorded so that we can be mindful of them and go back and read them. And maybe if we read these things enough, they'll get tattooed or imprinted on our souls and on our hearts. After Jesus came straightway out of the water and was baptized, it says that he went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and he fasted and he prayed. And you know that that communion with his heavenly Father must have been wonderful as the Lord God fed him and his son and probably laid forth, here's what we're going to do and here's how we're going to show our children how to live and what this gospel is and why it's so important to us. But Satan, the adversary, he thought he still, he thought and still does today. He thinks he can still win the battle. And he tempted Christ and wanted Christ to, you know, turn the stones into bread. And Christ said, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. And then again, he tempted Christ. It is written. It is written that you do not tempt the Lord thy God. And the third time. It is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And then the devil leaveth. Are we tempting our heavenly Father? When we say we're going to do things that we're supposed to do and we, we don't do them, or we, or we make promises to our brothers and sisters, or we make promises to our Heavenly Father, are we tempting Him without really knowing it? Something to give a little thought to. Wherefore the Almighty God, from Doctrine and Covenant, section 17, 5. Wherefore the Almighty God gave His only begotten Son, as it is written in those scriptures, which have been given Him. And Isaiah kind of sums up from Isaiah chapter 30, verse 8. 
He talks about why things are written, in case you're wondering. Now go, from our prophet Isaiah, now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book. Write it in a table and note it in a book. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Are we tempting our Heavenly Father? Are we serving any other God? You know, it's, it's difficult sometimes. We get focused, we get so busy, and even on the workings of the church, we get so busy that maybe we're not listening. Why did Christ ask Peter three times? Feed my sheep. I think that's important. I think that's critically important to our lives today. There's a song, uh, artist that I really like, and I, somehow he seems to work his way into most of my thoughts and minds, or if I'm preparing for a class or, or a, a spoken word or whatever, but Rich Mullins is one of the, my, I, I love his writing, I think he's a, a very spiritual man, and I think the Lord used him in some marvelous ways, but he's got a song called Hold Me, Jesus. And he talks about the grace of God and how strong the grace rings out. But there's a part in that song where he's, he has these words. And it says, surrender, which is sacrifice. Surrender doesn't come natural to me. I have to fight you. Let's see. I thought I could be able to remember that. Surrender doesn't come natural to me. I fight you for the things that I don't really want then take what, I, what it is that I need. We tend to be in this struggle a lot of times. We have to surrender. We have to sacrifice. And I think that by surrendering and sacrificing, then our ministry can begin. We heard it several times this morning in our uh, Sunday school class. Wait upon the Lord, brothers and sisters. We waited this morning on the Lord. I was here and listened to uh, Brother Aaron play the piano at pre pre worship. Music does wonders for me. It might not for everybody. There are other things that feed people in different ways, but boy, that piano playing. I just was waiting to be touched by God. Do we wait upon the Lord? Do we wait so we can hear the Lord? Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 40, 31, he says, uh, but they that wait upon the Lord will mount up with wings of eagles. And you guys know that. And they will run and not be weary. And they will walk and not faint. From Psalm, from the Psalms, Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Unto thee I lift up mine eyes, Psalm 123. O thou that dwellest in the heavens, behold as the eyes of servants Look into the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes, so our eyes wait, 
so our eyes wait. Upon the Lord our God, until that he have mercy upon us. If we prepare ourselves, if we go seeking the Lord first, if we wait upon him, and if we let that marvelous light, if we let that light of the Holy Spirit, of this gospel, fill our souls, fill our eyes, fill our ears, fill our heart, fill our mouths. Are we looking for opportunities with these eyes that we have in our head? How do we see each other? How, are, how do we look upon each other? Are we judgmental? Or do we look upon a brother and go, wow, I haven't, I've never served with Jeff and Tom's brother Phil from up front before. I can't tell you what that does to me, brothers and sisters. I've known Phil for many years. What a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Are we looking upon our brothers with those opportunities to go forth with them? Are we listening with our ears? Are we listening intently? Are we listening to what that small voice, you know that still small vo voice? Or is it the big voice that has to kick you sometimes to get you jump started? But God's there. You know, we just got through, we've been doing that Go Ye and Teach series over at, uh, up at Oak Grove. I was getting ready to say over at Colburn. I'm at Colburn, so sometimes I do miss that and I still say Colburn because I, I, I do, uh, do think a lot of, of, of my upbringing and been taught greatly here but we've been doing that Go Ye and Teach series we've had a wonderful marvelous turnout in Sunday evenings but what's interesting is how that re going over uh, those lectures those sessions and that rock of revelation this church is built on the rock of revelation that revelation's still here today God wants us to listen. He wants us to hear that voice. He wants us to wait on him. We just got through talking about that in Sunday school from 3 Nephi chapter 2. Where Laconius' people were gathered, they gathered themselves and their foods and their substances and their animals. And then they, they wanted to pray to God and said, okay, we're going to pray to God and we want God to make us go down and, you know, fight and kill these people. No. They had a chief, the chief, chief of, what was it, priest, governor's time? I can't remember. High priest, High priest yeah, that was over this that said, uh, no, he was their spiritual leader. He said, the, uh, we'll wait upon the Lord. The Lord forbid it right now. Chief judge, thank you. thought you were teaching the class. <laughs> it's a discussion. Class. It's a discussion, okay. So anyway, you guys go read 3 Nephi chapter 2 to, to make sure we're straight on that because I, I really did enjoy just, for those of you that were there this morning, that, that was very, very good, very uh, excellent setup and format, I thought. Anyway, are we listening to God? Do we praise God with our mouths? Oh, my goodness, this morning. What a wonderful, what a wonderful ministry. So I'm going to tie the mouths and hands together. I play an instrument. Our dear sisters, Marla, Melanie, my wife, and a lot of other, uh, uh, others of you I know do, but are we praising God with these talents? Are we singing out with joy? Is that marvelous light inside here, brothers? Are we singing it out at every opportunity? <clears throat> it's hard. We talked a little bit. We know a little bit about what goes on outside of these walls in the media, in the world. And the atrociousness, the horrificnesses of the abominations that are happening over in the Middle East, that are happening right here in the very United States. I think the time has passed. We are a protected and a prosperous people here in the United States, but it doesn't take much to go out and start finding these our, our, that we are being attacked. And we know there are people to this, at this time and this day that are on that wall. praising God, but they're warning us. Are our mouths filled with the words 
of our Heavenly Father in this gospel. And with our hearts, brothers and sisters, are we loving? Are we able to love? Are we able to really love like Jesus loves us? Now, I have I've not been the man that I promised God that I would be. I made a covenant. And I was baptized at Colburn Road. And I made a covenant with God that I would stand upright and be tall and be faithful. That baptize was recorded. It's been written. Thank goodness that God is a merciful God and he's got a plan of redemption for each one of us. But he wants us to love like him. He wants us to get ourselves in order. And I kind of, a quick analogy would be, you know, we, we, you got the uh, picture of the church and it's got the steps, the, the faith and repentance and the baptism laying on the hands, the windows are the gifts of the Spirit, that faith, wisdom, knowledge, tongues, interpretation of tongues, dreams, visions. Those windows let that Spirit in, just as these windows let a glorious light that God's blessed us with in. Our eyes, our ears, our mouths, our heart, they're all windows. Are our windows clean? Are they open? Are we receiving that Holy Spirit the way God wants us to? F. Henry Edwards mentioned years ago that it's difficult for man, it's difficult for people to realize that our highest purpose or our highest calling is to serve God. It's commonplace for us to put God second. Everybody has a different set of circumstances. Everybody has a different life. But just think about in your own individual lives, in my life. I know there are times that I don't seek out the Father. I do it after the fact. And again, God is a merciful God. And he blesses me sometimes, but sometimes he doesn't. And sometimes he makes the path harder. And I'm sure God's had to ask me more than three times. Mark, do you love us? Do you love me? Then feed my sheep. My uh, thoughts. As I've been touched over this last year, as Tammy and I are, are, are making a move back to, to uh, Oak Grove, and we've been, say, forced, but we've had to simplify things. Now, we started this venture a while back, but as we simplify in our lives and trying to get rid of the clutter, as we're trying to get our lives so that we don't have the clutter in it that causes us to have to maintain things, or keep up with things, or fix things. All those items that we continually go, well, oh, I can do that, I, yeah, I need to do this, while our brothers and sisters need to be fed, and God says, feed my sheep. I think it comes down to sacrifice or surrender. And I'm not going to read you much, but I feel like over the course of the last six months, I'll tell you that I attended a priesthood Saturday over at Oak Grove. And I think some of you were there. If you weren't there, it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, session, two or three classes. And uh, it was back in January. And I heard it was brought back to my mind about the lectures of faith. And we had a young man that stood up and said in their congregation they'd been challenged to read Lecture of Faith number six. Just read it daily. 
you can get it down to where you're reading it in five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes, whatever time it takes to read. But you know, it's worked wonders. And it's made me realize that this surrender and sacrifice that we need in our lives is truly, I think, the fundamental the fundamental cause of whether we are serving God or not serving God. And uh, I'll just read you a couple of sections from Lecture of Faith, section 6. Uh, number 5, it says, For a man to lay down his all, his character and reputation, his honor and applause, his good name among men, his house, his lands, his brothers and sisters, his wife and children, and even his own life, counting all things but filth and dross for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ requires more than mere belief or supposition, but actual knowledge. Now, I don't want you to go taking that saying, well, God, Mark said, or the lectures of faith, it's not saying get rid of all these things, but it's saying again, wait upon the Lord. Put God first, and he'll bless all these other things, and we won't have issues with our families. We won't have issues with our houses and with our lands and with our character and reputation because if we're filled with the marvelous light, if we're truly surrendering to God and we've truly sacrificed our lives, everything. It used to be, I think, when the uh, we chatted about it just a bit at our table in Sunday school, I think, and I, I don't know exactly, but when the pilgrims and, and people came over to the United States, they kind of, it was kind of the thought that it was, you know, God, country, and family, you know, God was up there in the fabric, in the fabric of who we are, our country, our nation, what we wanted to do. We've got to put God in the fabric of our soul. We've got to put this gospel, the Holy Spirit, Let us here observe that a religion that does not require the sacrifice of all things never has the power sufficient to produce the faith necessary unto life and salvation. For from the first existence, existence of man, the faith necessary unto the enjoyment of life and salvation never could be obtained without the sacrifice of all earthly, earthly things. Again, brothers and sisters, I'm not saying that we have to get rid of of things or that we don't have we have to live we have to eat we have to work we live in a society where it requires monetary it's a, it's a monetary system we have to give somebody something to get something in return well that's not too much different God wants us to give our lives he wants us to give our all to him and in return he'll give us he will feed us from on high and if we start wanting to talk about where the gifts of the Spirit have gone or why they're not as prevalent, I think all we have to do is go all the way back down and look at our sacrifices and how much or how little we've surrendered. There we are again, man's church. We go to classes. We have priesthood classes. We have Sunday school classes. And it seems like before long we start trying to dig in and dive in and go, okay, we can get this figured out. You do this. Okay, then you're going to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I got those two. Yeah, what's that third? What's that? I need that magic step. I need the step that's going to really just shoot me. There's no magic step. We've got to come back down. We have to humble ourselves before our Heavenly Father. And we have to stand before Him and we have to repent of who we are. We have to repent of our sins. And I know for myself, I need to repent daily. From Psalm... Psalms, I keep saying psalm, there's more than one psalm, I know you guys know that, I obviously. Psalms 50, this is, this is extremely, extremely important to our salvation. And I think, it, think he lays it out there as David has written, the mighty God, even the Lord, 
Psalm 50, 1 through 5, I'm going to read, hath spoken. Even the Lord hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun and the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath suffered. God hath shined, I'm sorry. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Okay, verse 5. It's not a magic bullet, but it gets it to the crux of sacrifice and surrendering. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather those saints unto me, those that have made a covenant by sacrifice. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the great German theolo theologian, uh, and if any of you, uh, I'd love to plug the, I can't remember who wrote the book, Tom, but uh, uh, so several of uh, my friends have read it. It's the, uh, the pastor, martyr, Prophet, I, it's, it's the big boy. Took me months to read it, but what a wonderful book. Really got into the inside of the German culture at that time and, and Hitler and, and, and all that. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, serve only God or you don't serve God at all. Hmm. Serve only God or you don't serve God at all. How insightful. It's kind of that lukewarm thing. You're either hot, you know, God would rather you be hot or cold. There's no in-between, right? We will be spewed out of the mouth of the Heavenly Father. Serve only God, or you don't serve God at all. Saying yes to God is saying no to everything else. Saying yes to God is saying no to everything else. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. We, we know those things. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, or even as Christ has forgiven us, so also do ye. And above all, Above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. That charity, that perfect love of Jesus Christ. When we stand before our Heavenly Father on that great that judgment bar, He's going to look into our souls. He's going to look into our eyes, into our lives. And He wants to see His Son, Jesus Christ. He wants to look at each one of us. And I, he yearns. He yearns that each of us would have that love. That his son, that he gave to us so that we could copy, exemplify. That we could walk after. That we could hopefully walk in those same steps and learn to be humble and full of charity and mindful and meek and we have to sacrifice to get there we have to surrender the carnal man we know that the carnal man is against the spiritual man and it's a battle we're going to fight to the very end and Satan is not going to give up and it's going to be up to each of us to serve God and only God. Poet Angela, Maya Angelou says that love recognizes no barriers, jumps hurdles, leaps fences, penetrates walls to arrive at its final destination 
full of hope. God's love has no barriers. What about our love? May the Lord continue to bless each of you in your ministry, in your lives. And may each of us strive to serve only God.